Western and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News at 6. One week from today, voters will decide who will be Kentucky's next governor. Tonight is the fifth and final debate. As Kristen Kennedy tells us, Governor Matt Bevin and Attorney General Andy Bashir have already debated a lot of issues and where they stand. The governor and attorney general disagree on just about every platform affecting Kentuckians. They even disagree on personal matters, like growing up poor. You know, my dad was a poor preacher's kid in western Kentucky. His dad was able to, to put him through the University of Kentucky right here. He went on and paid his way through law school. That was the attorney general in the Kentucky debate discussing family hardships. The governor disputed that claim Monday on KET's Kentucky Tonight Forum. I'm the only one of the two of us that's never had health care coverage my whole time growing up. I grew up well below the poverty level. You and I are very different in that regard. I don't speak with sympathy I've never about folks. A bell company, I speak. That's for sure. Oh, trust me, my friend. If you knew what you were talking about, you wouldn't want to. WKYT political editor Bill Bryant says a candidate's past matters, just not necessarily as much as their present. It paints a more complete picture if you know where a candidate came from, how they grew up, how they came to be the person they are today. I think that gives you some idea of, of what formed them as a person and how they might lead. Uh, but ultimately, I think people are going to decide based on what they see of these candidates now. What they're seeing now is a lot of bickering. Part of Monday night's forum focused on the governor's refusal to release his tax returns. The attorney general released his. If people want to know what I'm invested in, they can look and the state already tracks that. Every single company that I'm invested in, any financial investment I have is known. You wrote every et cetera single, on your disclosure. Every single investment that I have, et everything cetera. that I'm invested in, is, is, it, it, that was as it relates to stocks that are owned. Bryant says voters' expectations when it comes to that kind of financial transparency are changing. Or with Bevin's election in 2015, and then obviously with President Trump's in 2016, it throws into question whether uh, voters really do demand that. Questions about their backgrounds and earnings may come up again in tonight's last debate. Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. And that fifth and final debate is tonight starting at 7 at Northern Kentucky University. We now know a lot more about Vice President Mike Pence's visit to the region on Friday. The VP will make several stops with Governor Matt Bevin, Congressman Hal Rogers, and the 2019 GOP ticket. The first stop will be a meet and greet at Shep's Place in Corbin. Then they will participate in a first responders roundtable at the Williamsburg Tourism and Convention Center. Finally, there will be a get out the vote event at the Laurel London Optimist Club around 3.15 Friday afternoon. The Bevin campaign says this is the first part of a two-day Eastern Kentucky bus tour. Stops on Saturday have not been announced yet. Democratic candidate for Governor Andy Bashir and Lieutenant Governor Jacqueline Coleman are coming to Eastern Kentucky tomorrow. Bashir is stopping at Big Blue Smokehouse in Hazard at noon, and then he is heading to Golden Corral in London at 2 p.m. At both stops, he's expected to meet with voters. Stops are also planned tomorrow for Bashir and company in Louisville and Richmond. And we started out the day with plenty, plenty of sunshine. Now those clouds increasing and that's because a cold front is on the way, which means, yes, soggy weather returns. We'll go to take you to a few of those cameras first. US 119 over into Pine Mountain. You see a little bit of that sunshine. Then you see that sunshine start to go away due to the cloud cover increasing. Looking downtown into Whitesburg, 70 degrees, seeing those partly to mostly cloudy skies and feeling like 70 out there with that lower dew point. Some of us into the 60s, 63 into Moorhead, 66 Jackson, 63 into Somerset, 68 Prestonsburg, but still the nice 70s down into Harlan, Middlesboro, and over into Jonesville as well. Satellite and radar, you can see those clouds increasing throughout the day. It's because that cold front out to our northwest, it's slowly but surely moving into the mountains, bringing in a little bit more of that cloud cover as that moves in tomorrow and Thursday. But for tonight, we'll be dropping into about the low to mid 50s. Clouds continuing to increase, and those rain chances look to increase tomorrow and into your Halloween. And I'll have that Halloween forecast coming up in just a little bit. All right, Paige, thank you. And with that likelihood of rain and nasty conditions that Paige has been talking about on Halloween, 
Many cities and counties are moving their trick-or-treat dates to other days this week. You can find the latest list of trick-or-treat dates on our website, WYMT.com. We plan to continuously update the list as more cities and counties make decisions. And with Halloween just a couple days away, here are some basic safety tips you should follow. As usual, do not consume candy that looks like it's been tampered with. Travel in groups and most importantly, look out for cars. The National Safety Council says children are twice as likely to get hit by a car on Halloween than any other day in the year. Officers with the Hazard Police Department also have some advice to avoid being part of that grim statistic. We'll make sure that they've either got reflective tape, um, glow sticks, flashlights, something like that to illuminate themselves as they're walking, uh, you know, when it gets dark. Miller also adds to use extra caution in case of rain. We are learning the names of those involved in a deadly shooting in Pulaski County yesterday. Police say 30-year-old Donna L. Eldridge died as the result of the shooting at a house in Eubank. The other shooting victim is Bobby Edgar Eldridge. Bobby remains at UK Hospital. We do not know his condition at this time. Right now, police are not saying who shot whom or what led up to the shooting. A woman in Knox County is behind bars after police say she was driving under the influence at an elementary school. This is 27-year-old Lena Faye Hodge of Flatlick. A school resource officer says he saw Hodge pull into Flatlick Elementary and get out of the car with two children. The officer says he determined Hodge was under the influence. She was charged with DUI and four counts of second-degree wanton endangerment after the officer found two more smaller children in the car. The holidays are fast approaching and this means scammers are ramping up their efforts into tricking people for money. That's what happened to an American Legion post in Bourbon County. The sad part, the post was going to use the funds for its annual Christmas party that helps the needy. The post commander was tricked into spending $2,000 on green dot money pack cards after a scammer said their power would be cut off within 30 minutes if they were not paid because they knew the exact amounts of what we owe down to the cents, down to the penny. Randy Fisher says they already have plans to make sure their Christmas party goes on and no child is left without. He wants to use this as a warning to others not to fall victim. The Better Business Bureau says if you receive a call from a provider demanding payment right away, hang up and call the provider yourself. From making pottery to crafting guitars, Culture of Recovery in Heinemann is designed to help those facing addiction by getting them hands-on with different projects. WIMT's Katie Cook spent some time with some folks in that program today. Behind me are people working on making a guitar, but guitar is not the only option here at Culture of Recovery. One woman is using her hands to make items out of metal in the blacksmith section of the program. It helps me to be out in the community and things like that and be around other people. Culture of Recovery paired with Knott County's local rehab center and drug court program. And many participants say it helps having something to occupy their time and they find it relaxing. They've linked them to a hobby. They teach them a skilled craft. Uh, and in general, the staff there is, is very caring. Now the Artisan Center in Heinemann started this program a few years back. I'll have much more on those involved on WYMT at 11. But for now, in Heinemann, Katie Cook, WYMT Mountain News. Participants in that program meet every Tuesday and Wednesday. Back in July, the Defense Prisoner of War Missing in Action Accounting Agency identified the remains of a McGoffin County veteran killed in the Korean War. Private First Class Ray Palmer Fairchild was just 22 years old when he was killed on November 27, 1950 at the Battle of Chosen Reservoir in North Korea. Fairchild was from Mash Fork. A service and military honors for Fairchild is scheduled for 1 p.m. November 23rd at the McGoffin County Funeral Home Chapel. The public is invited to attend the service. Recently, we told you about hundreds of jobs coming to Floyd County following the announcement of the Wheelwright Prison reopening. Now the judge executive of the county says hundreds more jobs are on the way. The fiscal court teamed up with Teleworks USA to bring in around 300 jobs. The pay starts at $12 per hour. A job fair is scheduled for November 13th from 10 a.m. until noon, followed by another one at 1 p.m. until 3 p.m. in the Floyd County Fiscal Courtroom. 
A John Maxwell event called Live to Lead in the Mountains kicked off in Pikeville this morning. More than 200 people were there from local businesses, schools, and churches, even from here at WIMT. WIMT's Marian Fletcher was also there to learn why conferences like this are important for the region. Teaching leaders how to lead. Because leadership is such an important asset in the growth of any area. Philip Haywood has a hand in bringing the Live to Lead in the Mountains conference to Pikeville. As I say, get your palms a little sweaty and get out there and do some things. And the leadership is a big part of that. More than 200 people learning new perspectives, practical tools, and key takeaways. It's important for us to realize that uh, you know, what we do and how we live our lives matter. Tom Hartsock is excited to take what he learns and apply it to his local business. And the message that we're getting here is very clear. Be the best that you can be and then help others be the best they can be. Hartsock says many outside of the Appalachian region look down on Eastern Kentucky. However, we have one thing many areas do not. It's a culture where we can come together and say, you know what, we have a, a good commodity here and that's the people that are here because we care about people. Equipping Eastern Kentuckians with the power to move forward in Pike County. Marianne Fletcher, WYMT Mountain News. Belfry football coach Philip Haywood says if you want your community to grow, leadership should be at the roots. And we're tracking a cold front that'll bring soggy conditions back into the mountains Wednesday and Thursday, but we dry out and cool off after that moves through as we head into the weekend. I'll have those details coming up in just a little bit. A fitness studio in London is striving to strengthen the bodies and spirits of the women in their classes.